take, but the consumption was higher in young adults. In this morning's Consumer Alert, many of us recall childhood neighborhoods filled with friends, smiling faces, and a sense of community. Today, though, it seems that a lot of that has changed. Here with important information about a new movement bringing that back and tips for what you can do to make a difference in your own neighborhood is lifestyle lawyer Sherry O. Glad you joined us this morning. Appreciate it. Sure. Why do our neighborhoods though, feel so much less friendly? What happened? Do we get rid of the front porch? It's a convergence of a lot of trends, including that, Roxanne. I mean, the United States has a more transitory population than a lot of other countries. About 15%, almost 15% of our population actually moves every year. So when people move, they're less invested in their neighborhood. We also have had a dramatic drop in home ownership rates. We know that renters tend to be less invested, literally and figuratively, uh, in their neighborhood than non-renters. And we've also seen a huge in decrease in the number of stay-at-home parents. So, say, in 1975, we had twice as many people staying at home, occupying those homes and neighborhoods during the day and building relationships as we do today. Now we're working and we come home at night and we're exhausted. The last yeah. thing we want to do is build relationships. So all of these things add up to what we're seeing, which is more fences and hedges and walls than relationships. Liter literally and figuratively, right? So what can neighborhoods do and, and neighbors and homeowners and renters do to break down those barriers and build a quote neighborhood again. Sure, sure. Well, there's a popular new movement which I actually love. It's actually an old, a historic movement, but it's gaining a lot of momentum now called placemaking. So, with placemaking, folks in the neighborhood actually get together and sort of re envision or reinvent certain spaces in the neighborhood to make them more user friendly and maximize the benefit and the value for everyone. The, uh, they're usually, they tend to be small cost projects, but high in sweat equity and collaboration. It's actually the process of collaborating as much as the outcome that matters. So, that could mean depending on your neighborhood, maybe cleaning out an abandoned lot or creating a jogging path or a dog walking path or installing some benches and lighting in a place where people can actually meet and congregate. Uh, it's a wonderful movement and it's something that any neighborhood can really get involved in doing. I think that's a great idea. We actually have been talking about doing that in a cul-de-sac area that there's a little tree area and you know maybe that'll come up again now that you've mentioned it. That's that exactly and you can get local businesses or organizations to help fund it if you need some money. Oh that's a great idea. Yeah. Alright so that's not happening where you live but what could a person do on his or her own to kind of get this feeling going? Sure well it really depends on the neighborhood and the needs and how much you want to invest but I'm hearing from folks who organize for example a neighborhood cleanup. Cleaning up the litter can also reduce crime in a neighborhood. I'm hearing from folks who are creating a neighborhood directory or organizing uh, garage sales or Maybe if you are in an area that's prone to storms or natural disasters, maybe organize a disaster program for your neighborhood. The, the, the list is endless. You can organize a welcome committee. The point is that it has to start with someone. So, I mean, we can all begin today by just waving hello when we see our neighbors <laughs> or, or stopping and having a conversation. And the side benefit of this, Roxanne, is if you can create a neighborhood where other people want to live, it increases the value oh. of everyone's homes. So it's really a win-win. It's a great bottom line, but it's also a great feeling, too. And I started thinking the same thing just saying hello when you're walking the dog and passing somebody or waving in the car you, you get this feeling of knowing people and, and that's do. a nice feeling to feel like you have and actual it's neighbors contagious, and it gets us out of our own head it's healthy we're so on in our own heads now that we just we have to make the effort today yeah, more than we did before there are a lot of benefits to it besides just uh, making the neighborhood a little bit better with home values thanks thanks sure. a lot for those tips sure. Sherry good to have you here thanks let's go to John and Holiday. all right rock to 849